everybody joining the coverage. We are into the fifth end here. It's two cells tankered in Barrie, Ontario. My name's Jerry Gertz of Curling Zone. Hunjun Kim of Ganyang, South Korea, with a draw for two in the fourth end. They take a three point lead here. Four ends at the halfway point. Correct rock color there. Oh, what curling fans, curlers, uh, recreational fun, any competitive level. There you go, you see that happen every once in a while, even at the elite game. So we're here into fifth end of play. My name's Jerry Gertz of Curling Zone. It's been a great weekend here at the Barry Curling Club. Special thank you to Stu Sankey of Stu Sells Realty for putting on such a great event. 24 men's teams, 24 women's teams, and of course, 10 and 8 junior teams of each discipline as well here playing this weekend. Just trying to uh, get everything going here for our live coverage now, recording this game, so anything that you've missed previously, be sure to check it out uh, when we post the replay uh, uh, later uh, this weekend. The men's final, Yusuke Morizumi, 8-2 winners over Pyongyang Jung. Uh, South Korea, with that team competing out of Seoul. Um, Morizumi was just too much today and, and all weekend, of course, uh, playing great reaching the uh, final and uh, coming out uh, with a dominant victory. It's catching up to play here. Got uh, Team Yoshimura of Sapporo, Japan, currently skipped by Mina Kobayashi. Sayaki Yoshimura on leave currently from the team. And, uh, this five-player team uh, Kobayashi has its skip. Of course, Kobayashi has been playing great so far this season as this team has been competing on the curling tour across Canada, starting off at the Hokkaido curling tour earlier this season. So Yoshimura with the hammer here.
Hey guys, welcome to the Stu Sells team's brand new listing. And we are out here in Waterdown. And you know what? If you are sick and tired of being in the city, you know, we all love Toronto. I love Toronto, but you know what? Maybe it's a little bit too crowded. Maybe there's a little bit too much gridlock. Maybe there's no place to walk and go see cool stuff. So come on out to Waterdown. It's awesome. Beautiful little village. You can walk, great shops, cafes. We have the Waterdown Memorial Park just over the street. It's got a splash pad, baseball diamond. It's got a skateboarding thing for kids. We have a huge Fortino's. I was in there today getting flowers. It's crazy, that store. It's unbelievable. So you have bike paths and you have the Bruce Trail and you have a ton of parks. And we're in this lovely, quiet little subdivision. And look behind me, just say freaking gorgeous. This house is spectacular. Custom built, beautiful finishes. We have decor black stainless steel appliances, quartz counters throughout, three quarter inch white oak hardwood floor, ceramic tile. You want light, you want windows, you want bright. This house is gorgeous, super modern, open concept main floor, living, dining. It's got a butler's pantry. This office on the main floor. Upstairs we have three bedrooms and you know what? Every bedroom gets their own bathroom. And the master has a steam glass shower in it with a beautiful soaker tub. It's just luxury, luxury, high-end, luxury, high-end, luxury, high-end. This home is gorgeous. So go to stewcells.ca, see all the photos, the videos, and give me Stu a call for a personal tour.
to South Tankard. This is the women's championship final. Korea's Unjung Kim playing Sayaki Yoshimura, Team Yoshimura of Sapporo, Japan. Into the sixth here. Kim with the hammer, a one point lead. Their draw for two in the fourth end, really the, the big score here. Kobayashi with four stones for Yoshimura, had a drop or two, a tough drop. Needed to put it on the two line touch side of the button. So it's just a little bit too heavy and they'll have to settle for a single in five. Gotta love uh, Stu Sankey, uh, Stu Sells Realty Team. So much energy selling that house. He puts up a couple of his listings to showcase the properties he's got for sale. But man, that, that guy has so much energy for real estate. He gives so much back to curling. It'd be great for anybody interested in buying or selling a home. Obviously, I want Stu to sell my home with all that uh, work that he does in the neighborhood, selling the, the local community and, and promoting everything around the property idea of what they're getting into when they buy a new place. So thanks again to Stu, uh, all the sponsors here this week in, in Barry, and of course the Barry Curling Club, Melanie Hughes, the manager at the club, hosting a great event and really putting on a great show this weekend. For the show. My name's Jerry Gertz of Curling Zone. It's been a pleasure to bring you the production this weekend from Barry. Struggling a little bit with the internet this week, but uh, we've managed to uh, put together what the best production we can. Happen to get live here with the women's final. The men's final finishing early. Uh, every game that uh, we didn't get to live, uh, we uh, managed to record most of them. We'll be uploading them over the course of the next few days as we can and of course you'll get to watch some more great curling out of the uh, Stu Sells tankard here as uh, these games get up. But uh, semifinals, quarterfinals uh, from earlier today, watching these two great teams reach the final will be fun to dive back into the archives. So Anjun Kim with the hammer here in seven. Double center guard out front. Aggressive. Looking to get a steal here. Of course, Korea wants to avoid that. Quick single peel on the front. Get rid of one for now. If someone in the chat can help me try to clarify whether it's Cho Hee Kim throwing second stones. Young Gay Kim uh, with uh, second stones. position helpful right now but uh, definitely a good chance for the double appeal here for Team Kim. Double peel, but does leave her guard up in play. That is uh, off the center line, so for Kim, it's not such a bad stone, but at the same time, 
With the lead and with Hammer, they are looking to keep that middle as open as possible. And for Yoshimura, they're going to try and figure out how to change up these angles and try and generate a steal. At a minimum, they'd love to force Kim into a single point here and get their chance back with Hammer in the seventh inning.
attempting the run back there. They do peel that, that guard off that uh, Stone was buried behind. I think the call was good. Unfortunately, the execution there quite off. A nose hit anywhere on the inside would have removed at least one of the Japanese stones. Unfortunately, just peeling the front still leaves the same problem. Shot, something for the highlight reels. Again, this is the smart shot here. Trying to make the double on the two, close to the button. For her, keeping her shooter would be great to the where they make contact. This one wide, sweeper trying to make a curl.
Hey guys, welcome to the Stu Sells team's brand new listing. So go to stusells.ca, see all the photos, the videos, and give me Stu a call for a personal tour. We are here at the RBC Bloor West Village branch, and I'm here with two of their best mortgage brokers, Keith Joel and Dave Thompson. RBC has been an amazing sponsor of my curling season for about 10 years. And Keith, why is it so important to be involved in the community and sponsor youth at sports? First of all, Stuart, it's been a fantastic 10 years. I'm so happy to be involved, and so is RBC. We enjoy being out there, meeting all the curlers, and having a lot of fun along the way. So thanks for that. I just want to say I'm with you. I'm a big supporter of the community, and I just want to let everyone know all my mortgages with RBC, all my accounts with RBC. It's an amazing bank. These are great mortgage brokers. So look, go to rbc.com and come into the Blue West Village branch and visit these great guys. Yoshimura of Sapporo, to Japan. Yoshimura reaching the final with a 7-2 win over Lauren Mann. Yoshimura knocked off Susan Froud 6-5, scoring two in the last end to win that game in the quarterfinals. Of course, three and one over the course of the weekend. Wins over Bay Henderson, Caitlin Jewer, Courtney Ald, dropping a six to one decision to Krista McCarville in their last round robin game. Here is Unjung Kim. Defeated two Chinese entries in the playoffs to get here into the final. 9-2 win over Ray Wang. Wong, 9-2. Yu Han, 8-4 in the semifinals. Now they get a chance to play for the championship here. Leading 4-2. Kim defeated Chelsea Brandwood. And Team Bone, 7-1. Brandwood was 4-3. A loss to Caitlin. I believe that's Caitlin Wasilke, nine to seven, and then an eight to four win over Holly Duncan to put their spot into the playoffs. That game against Duncan was a uh, do or die battle. Winner was in. Of course, had that on our early stadium coverage here earlier this weekend as a live game. You can go check that one out. Yoshimura with the hammer back here in seven. Using the center guard in play in the middle. Kim is going to follow it around. At this point, six rocks have played. They could play a run back on this. So 
if that's what they're going to go with. Jung Kim already 26 and 10 on the season. 26 wins, 10 losses. Reaching the semifinals in Kitchener Waterloo, the KW Fall Classic, as well as quarterfinals appearances at the Stu Cells Oakville Tankard and the AMJ Campbell Shorty Jenkins Classic. 26 and 10 record. Uh, Seems like they have played very well in those events, not losing many games and, and just not quite coming out with the wins in the playoffs to get deep into the uh, into the playoffs. Yoshimura, 34 and 8 on the season. Already played 42 games as a team. Of course, this team has been busy with the Hokkaido curling tour and then coming over to Canada the weekend after Labor Day and playing several events. Yoshimura with two wins on the season already, the Hokkaido Bank Curling Classic in Sapporo and the Wakanai Midori Challenge Cup in Wakanai, which is way up on the North Island, famous for their scallops and fishing and seafood. Brilliant, great brand new facility up in Wakanai that they showcased during that event. Runner up finish at the Shorty Jenkins Classic and three quarter finals finishes. The Advix Cup in uh, Katami, Japan, the Tokoro Curling Facility. I know there's a new facility there, but I believe that's at the original. And then quarter finals at the Stu Cells Oakville and the Mother Club Classic. Again, another team that's been very, very busy early on in the season. Of course, this was the challenge with playing that run back. The shooter rolls off to the side, leaving a corner guard up. Shimura with the draw around that corner. Picked out by Team Kim. Shimura is going to ask Keho Bonadera to make another draw around the corner. Because I've got my rock count right here. Third stones here, that's Yuna Kachani with that draw. Just stays open. Appears the stones are pretty close to even. The key here, don't leave a double. Make the shots the rest of your way and you'll find yourself with a two to even the score. Cross in behind the Japanese team stone leaves an interesting play here. Curious is that's not great for Korea right now, as that does sort of protect the Japanese stone on the top of the forefoot. Katani could draw another rock, this time around that corner guard. Appears to be the call here. have a conversation about what they want to do. Just 
need to find that line to get around that corner. That corner very tight to the rings, and the team's struggling. Oh, sorry, uh, are struggling a little bit to get that going. Tani can make this better. Gonna need to get close to that guard. You wanna risk it though, a little chip. You'll still roll your shooter on and lie second and third. If you could ever just get it around just like that. Take it a little deeper. Doesn't did quite have the weight to get deep enough to get fully buried. That stone's still about half open. And now the concern is whether Korea can make a double using that stone. Of course, going to be very risky to make that call because if they ever rubbed on the guard, now three comes into play. to half of that stone. And it looks like they're going to make a play on this. Lots of broom there, so they're not going to throw a lot of weight at this. They really love to roll their shooter back towards the middle light. At least two in the eight foot here. A soft weight, not a terrible call. The other option here, if you ever again wreck on that guard as, as the shooter, will roll onto the rings and potentially leave you in a good position with another rock there and the guard removed at the same time. Good shot here from Unjun Kim looking to remove the buried stone. A lot of line here over through this a bit and that's the risk of taking more broom and playing a finesse shot. You ever get yourself amped up? Run straight, that's the end result. So now, opportunity Yoshimura. Thinking about the hit here. You really could play a freeze right on top. If you could ever get those lined up straight onto the redstone going backwards. Put a lot of pressure on him to make a good shot there last. The easier shot here for Noshimura. Play a little bit of a hit. Try and roll the shooter over. Try and lie three now and make him have to make a, a double with her last. So this is more a case of make the easier shot. Make your opponent have to make one versus make something complicated here. The risk, of course try something complicated and don't make the shot, you miss your opportunity even to get two. First of the two skip stones here from Mina Kobayashi. Four stone of Team Yoshimura. Love to hit about half a stone, roll the shooter across. Ray Stone would kick over, make the double a little bit more difficult. Really nice shot there from Kobayashi. Get some distance and spread in the stones. It's always going to be some sort of a double, but the key is to make it as difficult as possible. See the end result there. That fairly flat from a double perspective. Kim will have to throw a lot of weight to make sure she makes that one. Give it a go. Kind of have to at this point. One alternative, you could hit the middle stone, try and roll underneath the corner guard. But uh, the shot, uh, it's makeable with the right way. Let's see what she's got here.
Big weight just rolls underneath. Shooter rolling out of play. It's going to leave Mia Kobayashi. Draw 4 3. A chance to take the first lead of the game. shot with the draw. To get a response here on our clicks to show you the other end. We'll update you when we know score. Sorry about pictures. We'll be uh, right back after this quick break. Hey guys, welcome to the Stu Sells team's brand new listing. So go to stucells.ca, see all the photos, the videos, and give me Stu a call for a personal tour. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. to follow and watch all day today. We did pick it up in the fifth end on the live stream. We'll be sure to post the whole game up live over the next uh, day or so. As we catch up on the coverage here from the Stu South Tanker. Struggled a little bit with the internet this weekend. You probably noticed with some of the streams and so on. But uh, we managed to record everything and we'll make sure everything gets up following so you can see what ended up happening after following line scores all weekend. So here we are into the final end. Three is Unjun Kim trailing five to four with the hammer. Sun Young 
Kim throwing lead stones. Longtime teammate, part of this team, originally from Wisong, Korea, now curling at the Genyang Curling Center, the home of the 2018 Olympics where this team won silver. Team Yoshimura skipped by Mina Kobayashi. Kobayashi's been in the lineup all season, placing Sayaki Yoshimura, who is on leave, has moved in seamlessly. This team 34 and 8 on the season, playing some amazing curling to get the year underway. Madera, first of Here coming. Makes contact with both. Gets the shooter just out of the ring. That was critical to make sure that stone got out. However, for Yoshimura, there is a collection of stones in the middle. Gives them the chance to get buried, make this end a little bit more complicated. Those stones in the middle are really about controlling the real estate. And for Team Kim, that button is not accessible for a last shot right now. So if Yoshimura, Team Yoshimura can get close in there now. You know, Katani. First of two third stones. Team Yoshimura, new player on the team again this year. Next, this one back. 
Back forefoot, half open. Interesting position here. Freeze from him. Would leave that stone half exposed. However, any kind of draw would not remove shot stone. Any kind of freeze buried. Potentially leave that stone open to be picked out. Line looks great. Sweepers need to get it there. Off and on. Just hangs a little bit on the open side. See that stone come in here again. Sweepers finish it. Not quite. So here we go. Katani with her second here. Needs to get the line here closer to the guard. Really wants to get at least to the nose. Ideally, a little bit on the inside would be great. And there is a great shot. See her raise her fist. Very happy with that end result. And Team Yoshimura, they are really collecting a bunch of stones around that button, around that forefoot area, closing down the scoring area. Discussion here now for Team Kim. And the angle is really good here for Team Yoshimura. Looks like Kim's looking at potentially the run back here. What happened with that shot there? It appears that stone over curled. I don't believe it looked like they were trying to play something around that guard. 
However, over curls catches the inside. Tapping it straight back would have, would have been a great shot. Now, a little bit of trouble here for Team Kim. Down to Skip Stones, Mina Kobayashi is going to throw. Center guard here, guard on those stones. Just off the center line. Now the problem becomes that stone run in onto the yellow. Is a yellow Yoshimura rock for Team Kim. Big difference because all the angles are wrong for that red Korean stone sandwich in between those two yellows. this to stop somewhere in front a little bit amped up sliding a little bit further than I think they wanted to out enough it appears there is a possible double on the two yellows but Kim will have to hit it a little bit on the outside I don't believe a nose hit is good enough to get that double if you're Kim you'd love to have had that a little bit more in the middle so that a nose or a little bit of a roll inside would still make that double at this point, ignoring that and hitting and rolling underneath the guard is a consideration to try and get your two. You still got to try and get two here. And with Hammer here in the eighth end. Makes the double. Really, I think the uh, good thing here, that shooter sticks around. It's an interesting scenario here for Team Yoshimura. It appears the... Catch that double. Get another look at that overhead there. But it appears Korea's Unjung Kim lying one right now. As the teams take a closer look around that button. Second shot belonging to Yoshimura, that yellow behind the T line. Those rocks out in the open. Now you look at the play where the Koreans move that guard that was in front really ends up being a pretty good shot at the end of the day. Pierce Korea is lying two in the 12 foot as well. So 
those stones critical here for Korea setting up an opportunity to get a multiple point score last shot Mina Kobayashi it's to make a good one here Steel is likely looking not so good, but they really need to get a force to get into an extra end where they'll be the favorites to win. Playing the draw. Around the guards. This looks really good. Just about buried past the high guard. We see a sliver of that. Kim lying second shot. Just needs to move that out of the forefoot to get two for the win. This will be a fine finesse shot here. Right weight, right line. Great sweep by Ona Darrow. Darrow and Omiya on the brushes. to the guards as they can chip that stone out. Last rock here of the eighth end. Kim trails by one with the hammer. Chance for two and the win. Is on it hard. By the guard. Make the shot. The heroes of the day, the front end of Team Cam holding that last shot to get two and the win. What a game. What a finish. Both these teams played great today. Really great shot making out of Team Yoshimura. But Unjung Kim with the last shot heroics here in the eighth end. Just gets by the guards, makes the hit for two. And they are the champions of the Stu Cells Tankers here at the Barry Curling Club. Thanks everyone for tuning in. It's been a great weekend of curling here in Barry. Special thank you to Stu Sankey of Stu Cells Realty Team. Keith Joel of Royal Bank Mortgages. Great sponsors for a great series, everyone. Stu puts so much into this into this sport. We really appreciate any kind of re referrals. Let people know if you're in the Toronto area looking to sell your home. I want Stu marketing my house. And if you're looking for a place to buy, coming from outside the city, Stu knows the neighborhoods. He's the guy who's gonna figure out where you wanna be, what you need. And uh, he has such a passion for it that he wants to help everybody find it. Home. Stu's support of curling has been really special. It's been 12, 13 years now since the original Stu Sells Tankard started at the High Park Club. Happy to be back promoting these events, putting the streaming on. For anyone looking for the streaming, be sure to go to Curling Zone's YouTube page, 
Just go onto Google and search for Curling Zone YouTube. It'll take you right there. Simple and easy. You can always find the games on our website as well, curlingzone.com. The only place you should be clicking is on those little red and blue play buttons beside the games. You'll find a link directly to each game. We keep them all connected uh, all the time to make it simple to find. Anyways, my name's Jerry Gertz for Thomas West, Cole Steenwick, Perry Marshall, and the rest of the crew who's helped make this possible this weekend. My name's Jerry Gertz of Curling Zone. Until next time, everybody take care. Hey guys, welcome to the Stu Sells team's brand new listing. So go to stucells.ca, see all the photos, the videos, and give me Stu a call for a personal tour. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs.